Hi, my name is Bernadette Swans, and today I'll be talking to you about a urinalysis study that we performed on urine samples from prostate cancer survivors with a radiation and therapy history. With respect to this talk, I have nothing to disclose. Radiation cystitis is a long-term side effect from pelvic radiation therapy. Pelvic cancer survivors, such as prostate, cervical, or colorectal cancers, um, are at risk for developing this condition. RC is characterized by fibrosis and vascular damage, and as you can see in the image below, there are pale avascular, probably highly fibrotic areas that are alternated with uh, areas of neovascularization and with hemorrhaging. The disease progression of RC is poorly understood, and patients are often diagnosed at a late stage. This is problematic because the damage that's done from radiation therapy is currently irreversible. And so the earlier these patients are diagnosed, the earlier we can help and stop the progression of this condition. Human tissue samples are very limited. Taking biopsies of an already fragile bladder tissue is very risky for the patient's health. So the tissues that are currently available are likely collected either post-mortem or uh, after cystectomy. The goal of our study was to use, uh, see if we could use urine samples as liquid biopsy to help identify any protein changes that might occur in the bladder during the progression of radiation cystitis. For this study, we collected urine samples from prostate cancer survivors with and without a history of radiation therapy. Patients with a history of radiation therapy, we looked specifically whether these patients had received the radiation cystitis diagnosis. We looked at their symptom scores. Do they have nocturia, incontinence, a bladder spasms, or some degree of hematuria? And then finally, we looked specifically at those who did or did not have hematuria. In our group, hematuria patients all had received the radiation cystitis diagnosis, but were on the more severe spectrum of the disease. Sample collection was done by Dr. Heinz Nikolai. Patients gave a written uh, informed consent, filled out a bladder survey that talked about their bladder health, radiation history, and any uh, symptoms that they might have. Then these patients provided a urine sample, and to these urine samples, we added a preservative that allowed us to ship and store these samples at room temperature. Then at Beaumont Health, we performed urinalysis. We used multiplex luminex assay to look at numerous profibrotic, pro-inflammatory, and vascular proteins. Of the profibrotic proteins, TIMP1 was elevated in urine of prostate cancer survivors. We, see, we saw a significant difference in those patients who had hematuria. We saw an increasing trend in those patients with a radiation cystitis diagnosis and in those patients with a radiation cystitis symptom score. Other profibrotic proteins that may be of interest are PI1 and TIMP2. Likewise, uh, for vascular markers, we saw that hepatocyte growth factor was increased. Again, this was significant in those patients with hematuria but was, had an increasing trend in patients with an RC diagnosis and those with higher symptom scores. VEGFA also was elevated in these patients. In summary, uh, levels of fibrotic and vascular proteins, including TIMP1, TIMP2, PI1, HTF, and VEGFA were associated with radiation cystitis diagnoses, hematuria, and or an RC-related symptoms. We did not see a change in inflammatory cytokines uh, in the urine of these prostate cancer survivors, which was surprising to us given that uh, we can see increased inflammatory cytokines in other bladder inflammatory conditions such as interstitial cystitis. So this tells us that inflammation might not be the main factor or may not be as prominent in radiation cystitis as previously thought. Overall, uh, it is possible to uh, identify change in protein levels in the urine of prostate cancer survivors, and we hope that this might be an indication that it might be possible to develop a urine biomarker uh, to help diagnose these patients at an early stage.